I've been wanting to get into 3D video for a while, and it's not just the novelty of it. I really like the immersive aspect of 3D video. Now, that's not to say I like 360 video. 360 video, I think, is kind of gimmicky, and I really don't see it catching on long term. 180 video is, I think, where it's at. In most things, except maybe a nature documentary where you might actually want to look around and look behind you, it's fairly useless to have stuff behind you. Like, if you're watching a narrative, whatever you're supposed to be focusing on is going to be here, and what's behind you is going to be incidental at best. Like, let's say the cameras I was shooting this video with were 360 cameras. What is there to see behind them? Absolutely shit all. There's like a water heater and a boiler and a washing machine. Like, do you really want to turn your head and crane your neck just to see that? And it's dark back there. Like, I have to light that too? For what reason? Like, yes, if you're doing a tour of a city or some kind of documentary, I could see it being useful. Like, there's a video tour of Hong Kong. That was cool to be able to look around where I wanted to look, not just where the director wanted me to look. So anyway, agree with that or not, I'm just trying to tell you why I'm going with this stuff rather than 360 cameras. And even this stuff, like the lenses I have here, are not going to give me a full like, fisheye 180 degree field of view. It's going to be a fairly narrow field of view because I'm looking to make narrative videos where I'm telling you what you want to focus on and where there's not going to be anything else of interest in the video for you to turn around and look at. If there was, I would consider another option like if there was, I would definitely go with 360 cameras or very wide angle lenses. So I had a few requirements when deciding on a 3D rig. I wanted it to be light, not necessarily the whole rig. For example, I have recorders here that are not light and not small, but I wanted the cameras themselves to be fairly small and light so that they could go on a gimbal or pretty much be put anywhere they needed to go, in a car, um, hot air balloon, I don't know, whatever. The point is small and light. I wanted it to be 4K, even though right now that's not going to be taken advantage of fully because most distribution systems, let alone vision systems, don't allow for a full 4K image per eye. In fact, at best, you're looking at a 1440p image per eye, and even that's not the full 2560 wide. But the way I look at it, when I'm mastering stuff, I want the source footage to be as high quality as possible, because maybe I'll make a really cool video and one day I'll want to re-release it in 8K. Well, not really 8K, but you know what I mean, 8K wide. Now there's plenty of small, light, portable 4K cameras out there that could be used for 3D. GoPro. One of the major features that you absolutely need for a 3D camera system is the ability to take Genlock or frame sync or whatever you want to call it. It keeps the two shutters in sync so that you don't end up with, with a weird lag. Like for example, I'm shooting this right now with two cameras that are not synced. If I'm not moving too much, you're not going to really tell the difference because you're going to get the 3D effect. If you're looking at the background, which is static, you're not going to notice that the frames in both eyes are out of sync. But if I move very fast, you're going to see kind of a weird blurring effect and maybe get a little bit of a headache. So if that is happening to you, I do apologize. Um, obviously, I haven't built this rig yet, so I'm kind of using what I have. And it's not really good enough. So that's why I'll get into this more later, but that's why this is critical. And there's not many cameras out there at a relatively low price point that are small, light, 4K, and take Genlock. In fact, as far as I know, the Blackmagic Micro Studio camera is the only camera that fits that bill right now. Maybe by the time you watch this, there'll be other cameras, but I'm making this in the end of 2016, and this is all there is. And it's a pretty good camera. It's not great, but it has decent dynamic range. It'll beat most any DSLR that way, at least anything uh, in the same price range. It's not as good as Blackmagic cinema cameras, which is what I'm shooting this with, even though those are kind of overkill for this sort of video, but whatever. These are plenty serviceable. Not great low light performance. That's the one thing that's really uh, iffy about it. But if you're shooting a lot of outdoor stuff, you want to do 3D video of sports or other sort of action packed things, roller coasters, I don't know, whatever else, then it's a fine choice. I'm going to be shooting indoors in a controlled environment where I can set up the lighting how I choose, so it's a fine choice for me. So I already had one micro studio camera, and that's what's in here, and it's been working great. I've used it as the overhead camera in a lot of my videos. I like the image, I like the color. It's actually easier than the cinema cameras because I don't have to grade it extensively just to get it to look normal. If you're going for a cinematic look, 
yeah, this camera is going to be harder to grade the way you want, and it's not going to give you as good an effect as Blackmagic cinema cameras. And I'm not saying Blackmagic, 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 because I'm sponsored by them. I just happen to like their cameras at the price point at which you can buy them. I get all of mine used on eBay for like less than half of what they sell retail. So I have a bunch of Blackmagic cameras, but I don't spend a lot of money on them. To get good quality, cinema quality 4K video, these are really the only cameras you can buy without breaking the bank. Everyone will say, oh, this money this is far better cameras. Sony makes better cameras. Canon makes better cameras. That's arguable on a number of different points. But at the price, they don't. One other thing for 3D video is lenses. You need matched lenses. Like, they really need to be exactly the same. And that's hard to find. Like, you really want them with, like, consecutive serial numbers or nearly so. Um, I haven't got that here. I kind of settled for, again, I bought these on eBay. Uh, they were new in box, but severely discounted. I haven't tested them yet, actually. I hope they work. But anyway, they're 14 to 42 millimeter. F3.5 to 5.6. I usually like a wider aperture than that, but again, I'm trying not to break the bank with this setup, which is probably what you're trying to do also if you're watching this video. The reason I got these lenses, as opposed to many of the other MFT lenses out there, is because these support electronic zoom. So in other words, and it's compatible with the Micro Studio camera, specifically. In other words, you can control the zoom of these lenses remotely, which eventually will come into play because I want to build some kind of controller for these that'll allow me to adjust both cameras simultaneously, which is entirely possible with Blackmagic's uh, suite of products, whatever you want to call it. They have an Arduino shield that can transmit commands to this camera via SDI. That's going to be a project for another day though. I don't have those things here because I didn't want to add to the expense of this whole mess, which is already kind of costly. I mean, as of right now when I'm recording this video, these micro studio cameras, you cannot get them cheap on eBay. You can pretty much only get them new on eBay and they cost the same as they do on B&H or Amazon or anywhere else. That being said, again, for the price, these are the best cameras I think you could buy for a 3D rig, you know, given their constraints. I mean, the sensor for one. My goal in producing 3D content is for it to be seen on things like the Gear VR or the Google Daydream or even the Oculus or HTC Vive. And there are a few other things that you might not think of when putting together a rig like this. Now, first of all, these cameras are small. You want the intraocular or interaxial di uh, distance to be similar to the human eyes, which is about 3, 3.5 inches. These cameras, if they're butted up against each other, put the center of the lenses 3 inches apart. Now, they have ports on both sides, which... Actually, you know what? Let me show that. And so you can't actually butt them up against each other. So I'm trying to get away with keeping these as close as possible to try to keep that 3.5 inch distance between the center of the lenses. Now one side of the camera, you could technically get away with not using the ports. It has headphones, SDI in, SDI out, and a microphone in. Now you could use HDMI out to record all your video, but HDMI doesn't have as high a bit depth. It's not gonna give as good color rendering. But I like to use SDI for recording and HDMI for monitoring. Now that's monitoring even if the HDMI and SDI are hooked up to the same video recorder because by switching inputs I can switch whether I'm seeing the menu system on the HDMI output or the clean video on the SDI output. And as I said, I want to eventually use the SDI input to control the camera and so I can't go without using the ports on this side. And on this side is the aforementioned HDMI port as well as an expansion port. It's sort of a multi-connector for all sorts of other features that this camera supports, including Genlock, which we need. LANC, or LANC, I don't know, do people call it LANC? I don't even know. LANC control, um, and a bunch of others. Oh, including power. So if you don't want to power it off a single battery, if you want to power this all off one battery system, then you kind of need to tap into this port anyway. So like I said, both sides need to be wired, which means you need a lot of right angle connector cables. Now, right angle adapters aren't always going to suit the purpose because they tend to be bulkier than just a connector on an end of a cable. One thing I really don't like about the Micro Studio cameras is that they use these tiny little DIN connectors for the SDI. 
they're both a little bit flimsy. In fact, someone on Amazon had a terrible experience. One of them broke off. I don't know quite what they did to it. But my other problem is that the cables with DIN connectors tend to be very expensive. Fortunately, they tend to be also very good quality, but uh, yeah, not nearly as cheap as HDMI cables. This one, two foot cable, I think this is two feet. Yeah, it's two feet, cost $27. And I actually got two of them, which is kind of crazy for cables. I mean, if you're a professional video person, you know the cables, good quality cables, cost a lot of money. But me being a hobbyist and amateur, you know, $27 for a short cable is a big bullet to bite. Is that, the, is that the expression? Whatever. And this was a fairly specialty cable besides because it has right angle connectors on it. So you can see it still sticks out a decent amount. So if I'm gonna butt two of these cameras together, that's gonna be about the distance I'm gonna have between them. Which should still be okay as far as interaxial distance goes for my purposes. Because again, I'm not shooting these super wide angle. I'm not gonna shoot super close up with these. So should be okay with the focal lengths I'm using and the distance from, the, uh, from my subject, which will be me and whatever it is I'm opening. Now I should mention, I'm not shooting 3D video because I think like you guys wanna see my face in 3D and you know, I'm so great that I need to be in 3D. Not at all like that. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna do teardowns and product reviews and I think it'll add something for you to really be able to see the product in three dimensions, see me take it apart in three dimensions. I'm not 100% sure whether that'll catch on. Maybe it's a gimmick, and if so, well, whatever, I wasted my time. But I think it'll be cool. I would like to watch videos like that because amongst other things, it really gives you more of an idea of scale and sort of, when I say weight, I don't mean the physical weight of it, like related to mass. I mean sort of the way it feels in hand. I don't know, there's a certain ineffable quality about products that you can get from seeing them in three dimensions rotating around rather than on a flat screen. Well, I mean, technically you're watching a flat screen if you're watching in 3D, but whatever. You, you know what I'm saying. I hope you know what I'm saying. So that's why I'm going after 3D here. Oh, and the last thing I didn't really talk about was this. This is a very temporary, I cobbled this together out of a couple of shoulder mounts. It basically is just two camera mounting plates that are almost exactly uh, level with each other. I'm gonna have to fur this one up maybe with some washers, I don't know. Um, or maybe with some foam pads. This is temporary. I have on order a couple of plates from Small Rig with a couple of rod mounts so that I can really get them exactly the same height. And the plates from Small Rig that I got will support multiple mounting holes on the bottom of these cameras so that I can screw it down from two points on each camera, keeping them perfectly parallel to each other and perfectly level and plumb in all directions. Because I'm not going to be shooting in a way that I need to tow in the cameras. So as far as I know, I'm gonna just want them to be perfectly parallel to give the best viewing experience for the user. These cameras right now that I'm shooting this with are towed in a little bit. These are a little bit far away, a little bit longer focal length because that's sort of to compensate for the distance between the two cameras, which is fairly significant. It's probably about 10 inches. So that's why they're all the way back there so that, that, uh, so that your eyes don't hurt as much when you're watching this. Like I said, not ideal. One question I've seen, and this is not going to be a review of the Micro Studio camera, even though I already kind of gave one, um, but people always ask, what media does it record onto? It doesn't record onto any media. You need an external recorder like the Video Assist or the Atomos Shogun or Ninja or whatever else. Blackmagic does make an identical looking camera that does record a video internally, but it's only 1080. So that's why I'm going with the Micro Studio camera as opposed to the Micro Cinema camera. Micro cinema camera is only 1920 by 1080. This is 3840 by 2160. The cinema camera has a better sensor with more dynamic range. It'll just generally look better. So like I said, this is a bit of a compromise, but again, probably the best camera in this price range for this purpose. Now aside from the camera, there's not too much in this box here. You get one battery, which is nice. It's a standard Canon LP, uh, LPE6. Same as the 5D Mark III uses and 5D Mark IV, I think. I'm not sure if that, if that does, but it's a very common Canon compatible battery. These are just generics though, not Canon. It comes with a bunch of plugs for various international purposes, a UK plug, a European plug, Australian plug. It's an Australian company, so I'd hope so. And of course, a US plug, because that's where I am and that's uh, fortunate for me. And finally, the most, um, I don't want to say valuable, but the most important, I guess, cable 
that you'll have for this camera is this, the expansion cable. I'm not going to go through all the ports, you can read up on this online. If you don't need all of these inputs and outputs, if you just need a couple, like you need power and genlock, for example, um, then you could just fab up your own cable with uh, just those two outputs. I use a standard D sub 15, um, same as a VGA connector. So really easy to get, really easy to make your own cable. I like that. You know, I, sh I, I was kind of bitching about the DIN connectors on these cables, but like, they're at least fairly generic. I hate proprietary cables, hate them with a passion. So even though this looks very proprietary, all of these connectors on both ends, on all ends of these, are common connectors you can get really cheap online. And like I said, just make your own. Speaking of cables, this one, uh, I just, speaking of cables, this one is not ideal. This is meant to be a right angle VGA cable. Hopefully it actually has all 15 pins running through it. But like I said, if I want to put these two cameras butted up against each other, or nearly butted up against each other, not quite gonna work out, you know what I mean? So that's what I was talking about when I said right angle connectors. Now, eventually I wanna make my own custom cable, which I put a right angle connector on here, but for now I got a VGA cable that goes like this, and it's actually not as bad as it seems. It's not blocking the HDMI port, wonder of wonders, because there's an offset to this connector. So that's pretty cool. So this gets me closer. It doesn't quite get me close enough. There's probably about an inch and a half in it, in that distance. So if I tighten these down, maybe like an inch and a quarter. So that would probably get, that would give me about 4.25 inches between the eyes, uh, between the lenses. Not exactly ideal. Not the end of the world though, if I'm shooting far enough away with a sufficient uh, zoom on my lens. But that's something that can easily be resolved by again, making my own cable, which is a lot more desirable than this giant bulky cable of which I'll have two. Where did I put the other one? You see like this rat's nest hanging off a couple of cameras. Not exactly cool for portability. But fine for shooting down here in my basement in the studio, as it were. Um, you know, when it's on a tripod, it's not gonna get in my way, it's not gonna bother me. So I can create the, ca the custom cables later at my leisure. So this is an Atomos case, but I had an extra one. So I have my Blackmagic video assist in here. I like this less than the Atomo Shogun, which is in here. Even though this is the previous generation, um, it's just, it just has more professional features. I feel like it just can do a lot more than the Blackmagic Video Assist. I'll do a full comparison review of these because the Video Assist though does have a lot of strong points that this does not. It's actually a really tough call. I don't know which one I'd recommend to you. Um, in any case, I'd probably recommend you get two identical recorders slash monitors because having two different ones meaning means having two different user interfaces, two different sets of cables, two different sets of batteries. Uh, this takes SSDs, this takes SD cards. So it becomes a pain in the ass to have two separate ones. I just wound up with two different models and two different brands. If you're doing this from scratch, pick one or the other. I hope to help you out with that soon. So yeah, I. So yeah, I think that is pretty much all I need to build this rig. So I'm gonna put something together real quick. It's not gonna be ideal, it's not gonna look super cool, but at least show you what I'm after here. And I'm not gonna show you the process because the process is just gonna involve connecting cables to where they need to go. I mean, and just mounting two cameras on this. You could probably envision how that's gonna go and when I show you the final thing, you're gonna, you're gonna see it all. I mean, there's nothing hidden. It's all on the outside. So. Anyway, and there it is. Um, not really the neatest or most ideal setup, but I threw this together in like 15 minutes. Uh, got both monitors mounted here and here, quite usable. Uh, got the cameras mounted on the mounting plate. They're not quite lined up. Like I said, this is not my final solution. My, that's not a good phrase. My final way of doing it. But um, yeah, it should suffice for some test footage for now. You know, like everything, you run into problems. Uh, you'll notice there's no, well, maybe you can't notice, but there's no HDMI cable hooked up to this camera. It's because it didn't quite fit in with this VGA right angle adapter. But I got another adapter on order and uh, I can get another HDMI cable that will hopefully fit the bill just right. Um, definitely too much of a gap between here because this SDI cable sort of bumps into this VGA adapter. 
Uh, again, not ideal, gonna do something about that, we'll see. Uh, here on this one we got HDMI, and on both of them I have the full uh, dongle with all those inputs and outputs, and so I have the reference in hooked up to the sync generator down here. And that's really all there is, I guess, to a basic 3D rig. Um, the rest is just making sure the cameras are perfectly aligned to each other, making sure the zoom and focus are just bang on between the two of them so that they're as identical as possible. Um, with cheap consumer kit lenses like these, it's probably never going to be absolutely perfect, but you want to get it as close as possible when shooting so you don't have to mess around too much with the images in post. And by the way, that's another reason I chose zoom lenses rather than primes. I mean, besides the lack of flexibility in primes, even if you get two, let's say, 14 millimeter lenses for MFT, that's a decent focal length, at least for my purposes, they're probably not gonna be a perfect 14 millimeters each. Unless, like I said before, unless you get them in sequential serial numbers from the factory, there's probably gonna be a slight variation between the two. And so you're gonna end up with different framing ever so slightly and different distortion that's going to make all the difference in the world when you're trying to put the two images side by side or over under or however you're going to arrange it. So at least with a zoom lens you can tweak it a little bit while you're getting the shot set up. One thing that makes a 3D rig bulky especially if you're going to try to shoulder mount it or bring it with you in any sort of way is that you need two recorders. Now you can get smaller recorders with smaller screens. Um, I don't know if you can get smaller 4K recorders though which is what these both are. So that adds a bit of bulk and is something you definitely have to take into account when planning any kind of shoot. Again, I'm mostly using this indoors in the studio, basement, whatever this place is. So it's fine with me. They could be 14 inch monitors for all I care. Although eventually I do want to take this outside and shoot some way cooler stuff with it than myself talking. And by the way, this is what the uh, view from these two cameras looks like right now. Very boring over there. That's why I wouldn't make that a 360 camera because why do you need to see that way? Well, I've been Scott, and man, this is close up. Thanks for watching. This has been a, a ramble about 3D video. I hope to have more on the subject and more about this rig specifically as it becomes a little better developed. A couple more parts I need right here, um, and we should have something nice. I'm going to start doing a lot more videos in 3D, and I'm going to do both a 3D and 2D option. And I don't know how I'm going to work that. Unfortunately, when you upload a 3D video to YouTube, it makes it 3D. As far as I could tell, right now, there's no way to watch it as a 2D video. Like, they can't just stretch out one of the eyes to make the full frame. And even if they did, the resolution wouldn't be great. It would look like crap. So I think I'm going to upload one version of each video. I don't want to clog up my channel with both videos all the time, so... Let me know in the comments, uh, if anyone actually watches this, whether you'd rather see me put a 3D version, a side-by-side -side version, and the 2D version in the same channel, or should I create a separate, like, Scott 3D channel, which will sound way more exciting than it is, where I can put the 3D videos and sort of, just at the beginning of each video, just make people aware that there's another channel with the other videos, with either an annotation or a link in the description, or both. There's a, there's a few things, I think, that uh, need to be tweaked with YouTube and just with this whole process of 3D video and 360 video in general. Like, it would be great if I could upload both videos, both a 2D and 3D version, and have YouTube treat it as sort of the same video, where they both be in perfect sync to each other, so you could switch back and forth between the two, depending on what kind of hardware you were using, whether you're using, like, you know, your eyes or some kind of, uh, you know, Star Trek visor. Um, but for now, that's not really possible. I don't really know why not. I mean, it seems kind of like a good idea. But I guess most people either do 3D or they don't. But again, this sort of thing is an application where it would be nice to watch stuff in 3D or 2D at your pleasure, rather than forcing one or the other upon you. And I like choice, so I'd rather pass it on to you. Anyway, ramble over. Thanks for watching. I've been Scott. Subscribe. Check out the blog at s.co.tt and whatever else you might want to do on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. What am I even doing with my hands? What the fuck was that? Alright.